Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'm very good to see you, all of you here, and I'm from Mongolia. Today we're going to uh, sing a Mongolian song. So I think all, all of you know this song. It's in English, it's called In His Time. So, uh, but we will sing it in Mongolian, uh, and yeah, okay. So, forgive my English. <laughs> okay. The other mic? Is it okay? Please. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. So uh, before we start, let's have a prayer. And I would like to pray in Mongolian because of language barrier. I hope you understand that. Эзэн Иесус мэн та им сайхан гайхалтай шабат өдри үхсэн байрлаа. Та намайг бас энэ сүм дээрээд таны үгийг хуваалцах боломжийн үхсэн талхаж байна. Тэгээд одоо ярих зүйлс эзэн мэн миний үг биш, харин таны үг байх болтугай. Энд байгаа хүн бүрийн зүр сэтгэлд та орж өөрийгөө байдаг агуу эзэн бурхан гэдгээ бас мэдрүүлж харуулж өгөөрэй. Энэ бүгдийг эзэн Есүсийн нэр өөр залбирлаа. Амин. Окей. And uh, it is my pleasure to be here and preaching today. So uh, I'm not a pastor, but I have preached many times in Mongolian. So I think it's uh, proper to introduce myself, you know. So uh, my name is Ingman Dachbol. So uh, I just, I found out people mostly know me as uh, John Mark in the newsletters. And uh, I have a wife and three kids. And my oldest daughter is 13 years old. And the second is seven, and the youngest son is five years old. And so, I have a question. You know, have you ever been a situation like you know, like let's say, 
everything changed in the last minute and you've been very nervous? I think we all do, right? So that's me now, you know. <laughs> Have you ever preached before? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever preached in different language before? Wow. So I'm very nervous, but I, 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 I'm, I hope you understand me, and I hope. Well, I'm not relying on my language skill. I believe Holy Spirit will translate it to you. So, yeah. Uh, before I get into my, you know, sermon, I would like to talk about a uh, situation or uh, projects in Mongolia. We're doing work in Mongolia, and we have several projects, mostly these. Uh, our projects focusing on disciple making and uh, we're I hope we're going to send some missionaries to other places to reach uh, unreached Mongolians that's our uh, goal and mission so uh, I was told to preach today uh, maybe two weeks ago and uh, they were, she asked me, what's the name of the sermon? So I was thinking, okay, so what can I, what can this be called? So I was thinking and fulfilling the Master's, it was actually a commandment, but maybe it's my bad English, you know. So she changed it to commission. And I hope you all understand what it means. And uh, so... In 1991, we, the Adventist Church started in Mongolia. So since then, I became a, become an Adventist 2005 or six between there. So my journey to become an Adventist was like uh, not so easy, because there was a lot of rumors about you know Christianity. And when I was a kid, I think, I was thinking like, why am I living or what's the life of, you know, what this life is about, you know. That was, I always wonder about this purpose of life. And at that time, I had, my parents were not so, uh, their marriage was not so healthy and my parents were always fighting each other and that was, and, and I thought oh, maybe life is not about the family, I should look for other things. So if my then my parents divorced and I went with my dad and my brother went with my mom. So we were separated and so my dad had to feed me and he had to work and he left me at home. Maybe I was five or something. I was locked in the house all alone and I think it sounds very dangerous to you but it happens in Mongolia many times and it's Mongolian life you know I was home and all alone playing inside then I started going out to play other kids then I found out oh maybe you know purpose of life is making friends with other people and living for my friends so I became a lot of friends there and you know we play around then it was uh, late of late of 1990. We had video games there, so I played video games with my friends. And then my mom, I mean, my dad wasn't happy with that. So fortunately, in the beginning of 2000, I started living with my 
mom and brother. So, it all starts there. My brother became an Adventist in 2003. So for us it was very shocking news. We didn't care about Adventist, Catholic, you know, all these denominations. For us Christianity is the same foreign uh, religion. We heard a lot of rumors about Christianity like Christians kill themselves after a while. So that's one of the rumors we had. So my mom was so worried about my brother, so he asked me to hide all the knives and take off all the handles from the window because we were living in an apartment and he would jump off from the ninth floor and die. And that's what we thought about Christianity. But my brother was changed a lot, you know. He stopped drinking, smoking, and we were both playing video games, but he stopped playing video games. So I left, I was left all alone playing video games with my friends. And one thing my brother taught me was, you know, if mom doesn't give us money to play video games, we can steal things and we can play, we could play. But now he's a Christian, you know. He doesn't help me anymore. So I had to steal by myself. And I had a lot of friends who were with me playing video games and one of my friends always came to me, you know, talk about the video games and oh, there's new games released, you know, why don't you try? But you know, we had no money and the only option was stealing. Then I was stealing and stealing. I couldn't stop it. I wished to stop because it's not nice. Like, no one treats nice to a thief. I had no uh, respect in my family, so everybody, everybody thinks I'm a useless person, kid. Then some years later, my that friend who always, you know, come to me and play games, he came to me one time and told me like, shared me one story. He wanted to play video games real bad, but he had no money, but he knew I could steal things and we can play. So he was using me and, you know, tickling my addiction and he made me steal things from my home so we could play. So I heard the story and, oh, maybe making a friend is not the purpose of life. So what could be the purpose of life? But I was still addicted in the video games. Well, nowadays it's a phone, right? We all scroll down phones and picture, taking the pictures and social medias. Similar like that, we were, uh, I was playing video games. Then, I knew my brother stopped playing video games, right? As believing in Jesus Christ. So I, the, my last option was, you know, going to church. But I tried many things, you know. I went to the monks and went to a Buddhist temple. And I always prayed inside me, you know, if there, is a, if there was a God, please help me. But nothing happened. So every time I steal things, my dad was there waiting for me to beat me up real bad. So I knew I was going to be beat up, but, you know, 
I was still stealing. Then one day I decided to go to church. And here I am. You know, God changed me. But it didn't happen, you know, like this. I thought, you know, it just happened in a month. But I now I remember there was a lot of people helping me. When I entered the church first time, there was people who were so nice. Not like my friends. Always cursing each other, hitting each other, you know. Not my schoolmates. So, it's been a month then and I like those people and I started asking them to be with them around. But they were so busy. And there was some group of guys, you know, uh, doing some media work. Like they were making a voiceover for the Jesus movie. So I tried to make an opportunity, like, yeah, let's do the voiceover. I, wanna, I want to join. And, but there was no place. So I called them in my house. So they all had to bring all their big desktop computers. You know, nowadays we can use laptop, but we didn't have laptops. So we all brought our big computers in my house, five of us. We didn't sleep whole night, you know, just making voiceovers on the Jesus movie. So, those four guys were sacrificing their time and sleep just for me. You know, they were just doing it for my pleasure because I wanted to, because I wanted to be with them. And like this, a lot of People sacrifice their time and money and, you know, sleep, their life for others. So because of that, we, you know, I accepted Jesus Christ. And, yeah, so I want to share you one Bible verse. You, I think this is the very famous Bible verse. You all of, all of you know this. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that, that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and, and a hope. Interestingly, in Mongolian Bible, it says, the plan, God has a plan for us. So we have different translation. So God had the plan for me, you know, to change me. So after a few years, well, I was very active in the church. The thing I really liked was like, Jesus is powerful. You know, God is most high, most powerful, and He can do anything. You know, it really attracted me because I don't know. I didn't want to be a coward. I wanted to be a best among, you know, my country. I don't know. So I really attracted God's this powerful side. But the other side was, you know, like God is loving, forgiving. Somehow I didn't really attract it then. I, it was, to me, it was a little bit not nice, you know. Like God is loving, God, Jesus died for you, and by His blood you're saved. This didn't make any sense to me. But this side, you know, God is powerful, just, and He's He can punish you if He wants. And oh yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I like it because my dad always punished me. Maybe that's why I liked it. So after a few years, I get into college. And I was thinking in the class. 
What am I studying? Well, I will study and then I graduate and I will work and then I will have a kids, they will study, they will graduate, they will work and their kids. To me it was like never ending circle. So I decided to quit. And there was one uh, missionary training place in Mongolia. One American guy was there. So I joined the missionary training. So I could find a purpose in my life. Unfortunately, my partner was a female that I didn't like her. And fortunately, she became my wife in the future. <laughs> but during that time, I was in the missionary training. It was uh, like two months training. And there was a girl from China. I really liked her. She was tall, athletic, beautiful, you know. And after a month, we started dating. And so I decided not to go as a missionary. So I decided to stay in Mongolia to be with her. So that American guy could not wait for me, you know. They had to move on. So they sent the girl who was my future wife to one closed country. So I stayed. But you know what? The, the girl I was dating with, she went back to China. So I was all alone in Mongolia. So we had never have any contact uh, with that girl in China. And I chose a girl over missionary work. So, and now when I see back, I think they will always bring up something, you know, to attract me. And do you understand my English? Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying real hard here, sweating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and to long story short, in 2010 I married with my wife and we both uh, went on mission field in close country. So we, and that was my first calling. And the second calling was in 2019 and there was one guy came from another country so he was looking for missionaries to his country because there was a lot of Mongolians living there and they did not, did not accept locals because they thought Christianity is foreign religion so those Mongolians must be Buddhist they thought so that's why they wanted to have Mongolian missionaries from uh, missionaries from Mongolia there. So they hoped they could reach them. So that guy came and uh, they announced the uh, calling. There were, as I remember, three families were there. One of the family was my family. And then one by one, those families refused to go. I also wanted to refuse because, you know, we had three kids. It was difficult to go. And I had a good job that I really obsessed with. So I made the deal with God. Okay, God, I don't want to go.
But how do I know you really calling me? If you're really calling me, I, I'm ready. So, but personally, I didn't want to go. So I started to promote things to other people. You know, oh, there's a calling. Why don't you go? Then they were starting thinking, oh, maybe, you know, oh, oh really, maybe I can go. I said, oh, I'll pray for you. And then somehow they did not go. So my deal with God was like, oh, if anybody go, if no one will go, I will go. So finally, time is up, no one was there. I talked with my wife, then we went there. So you know, uh, Isaiah taught, said to God, you know, here am I, I will go. So I said same thing to God. So if nobody's there, I will go. It sounds, uh, I'm making it very short and sounds very, you know, simple. But it wasn't that simple, it was very challenging. And between those times, uh, one time I lost my way. I think I should share this because I think many people will uh, many people struggle with you know similar situation. In 2015, I had the argument with my wife, and she said, you're a fake. You're a fake Christian. And it was very, it really hurt me. You know, you know wives, always know how to hurt husband, right? <laughs> and it really worked and it did the job 200% and I decided not to go to church anymore. Okay, if you think I am a fake, why would I be there? You know? So, I got a job and I was working there. So I tried to live like uh, other people, you know, we call them worldly people. So I tried to live like that. I tried to curse, didn't work. It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't me, you know. And people tried to offer me a uh, alcohol. I hated alcohol because my dad was alcoholic and he was, you know, he ruined my family. It's not because of my religion, I, it's because of my experience of my father, I hated it. So I did not accept that. Some people offered me smoke, it didn't work. This Adventist principle, a biblical principle was really deeply rooted in me. Somehow it didn't really work. So, but I was still trying hard, you know, trying to lie and curse, be like them. And deep in my heart, I was thinking, okay, I betrayed God. I did something really bad. So God has to punish me now. Because God is just, He is powerful, right? Now He has to punish me because I'm His kid. Have you ever felt that before? Like you have done, done something wrong and you feel so guilty and if you get punished or get, you know, scolded and you get, you, you would feel better? So I was thinking like that. I was like that, you know. When my kid 
has done something wrong, I always dare to say, no, you've done something real wrong and now you have to do it this way. And I was waiting for him to punish me, waiting for him to punish me. He didn't. He wasn't punishing me, okay? Maybe next month. I was waiting for him. If he would... Well, he never punished me, you know? Amen. He never punished me. So... I don't know why he didn't punish me, but I found it at that moment why he didn't punish me. Because God is not there to punish us. He is there to love us. I found out that so late after I hurt my family, real bad, you know, that's so unfortunate, but God brought us unity in my family through mission work. And I understood why Jesus died for me. Before it wasn't so, you know, important to me. But I found out something really cool. We have a song called I cannot I, I can never forget So my translation is real bad but the, something like that you know the song's name is but in the lyrics it says even if I am living in this world alone you know only one person living in this world Jesus would still come to save me So, since then, I understood who God is, and He showed me who He is, and He, he wasn't there to punish me, but He was, you know, pulling me back by His love. But His love hit me real hard, made me understand who God is. So let's go back into our mission work, you know. And I want to share about how was life in mission field. I, uh, of course, missionaries go to places to reach people, right? To share about God. But mostly, locals do not appreciate the news. In China, I was the first mission field. I was like, uh, I was 21 years old, and with my wife. Well, there was a lot of difficulties, but beside those difficulties, uh, the most discouraging thing is like. No one, interest, no one is interested in the message, right? The missionaries are there to share the gospel, but if nobody is interested in it, that's so discouraging. But by the grace of God, we had, you know, some students who would like to hear. And my wife had a friend her name was Daisy, and they've been, they had been studying Bible, I don't know how long, but quite a long time. And their uh, strategy was like, she was not mentioning Jesus' name. Because if we say Jesus, 
they would freak out and oh I know Jesus, you know, I know about this religion and I don't want I'm not interested in that. So we were just, you know, saying God who created this world. So we're talking about just God can help you. you we, we pray to God and we never mention Jesus' name. But the end of of the Bible study, uh, we start, you know, little by little, start mentioning about Jesus Christ. Then my wife was studying uh, Bible with her. Then they were, I think, studying a story of that Jesus healing a blind man on the street. So she was very touched by that story because her mom was a blind and she thought if God can heal a blind can God heal my mom? And she said why no one ever told us about this? None in my family, none in my village talked about, shared us about this, you know. That God can heal the blind. So something like that, there are a lot of people who never heard about the real gospel. Maybe they heard about the name of Jesus. According to them, this is something strange. Something they cannot accept it. So in Russia, we had a lot of friends too. And there were, uh, because of time, I'm only highlighting a few of them. And uh, her name was Crystal. And we, in that country, we did real hard, I mean, we tried real hard to reach them. The first thing was like we had to trust their wind, right? We can't just go there, okay, Jesus loves you. They wouldn't listen. So we became very close friends. And the thing is, you know, they think Mongolians must be Buddhist. And the first thing they had to accept was like us, you know, Christian Mongolian, you know. They have to accept us first. How can Mongolians be Christian? Well, there are not many Christians in Mongolia, only less than 1% is Christian. So yeah, they're right. How can Mongolians be Christian, right? So I was there. Yeah, here I am. I am a Christian. So they asked me a lot of questions, you know. They tried to prove me wrong. Like, you can't be Christian. So somehow we become very good friends, you know. We eat together. And we do many things together. And they became like this. When we eat, they say, okay, let's pray. And when we're in the restaurant, they say, okay, let's order food, but no pork. And no alcohol. But they're not Christian, but they respect us, you know. They respect our belief. It was start. So we won their trust now. Now it's time to, you know, sh start to sharing the gospel. But unfortunately, we had to left that country because of the war and one day my wife got a call from our one of our friends her name is Crystal she asked she said I want to read Bible wow it was very amazing to us you know <gasps> but we weren't so emotional. Oh, yes, you can read Bible. And if you have any question, ask us. You know, we would, we're happy to help you. 
But she didn't ask any, she did not ask any help. So after a while we asked, did you read Bible? She said, oh, I read whole Bible, you know, from Genesis to Revelation. She wasn't Christian, but she interested in the Bible. So later we had the opportunity to meet her and we asked, why did you want to read Bible? She said, because I saw you guys, you know, how you were treating your kids, how you were eating, how you were living, and she liked the way we were living there. She liked our lifestyle. But we didn't know she was so uh, into that. Like I said, doing missionary work is very discouraging sometimes, you know. Because there is a lot of challenges, you know. Uh, sickness, learning language, culture shock, a lot of difficulties. So, but that was the very good news to us. It was very encouraging us because without knowing God was doing, you know, His work through us. So in reality, maybe we don't know like how we're reaching people, but by our life, by our, you know, action, God is doing His job, reaching other people. We had so many difficulties, actually, you know. I almost lost my wife and I almost lost my kid, son, only son. It was terrible. My daughter was in the school, bullied so badly. What can I do? I don't know the language. I was just standing there trying to translate on my phone, you know, Google translation doesn't work very well. So, but that message, you know, that she wanted to read Bible and she saw our life and, and she, in, she was interested in God, was very inspiring to us. So like that, our mission work was uh, continued in those countries and the most beautiful thing you know happened to us was God brought the unity in our family yeah amen because you were all alone in another country no friends nobody would take care of you there is your wife and your kids. So you had, you, I have to rely on my family, you know. If I was in Mongolia, I can go out and see my friends, you know, spend time with them. I can spend my time, uh, I can have some fun. But in another country, there is only my family. So if you want, to have, you know, strong family relationship, maybe you can go on a mission field to another country. You can try that. So I sacrificed my career for mission work that I thought, you know, but in return he brought strong family relationship. Well, we still have struggles, you know. Sometimes I argue with my wife. She just blocked me on the Facebook last week, you know, because I was not texting her much. It's two hours difference from America. Now there's uh, night, they're sleeping. So, yeah, but our love towards each other increased a lot. So, I have a question, you know. 
What can we do fulfilling the Master's commission? How much can we sacrifice? I think from, the, from my childhood, I was always thinking about you know, the purpose of life. Well, I'm still thinking about this. My only conclusion is, when Jesus comes, it will end, you know. There's a lot of unjust, a lot of people are suffering, sickness. I don't want to see my kids sick, you know. So my only conclusion was like, okay, if I do mission work, if I share the gospel, I, will, I can prepare uh, Jesus' path so he can come sooner. Amen. So what can be the biggest sacrifice we can make to fulfill the Master's commission. It can be time, money. Or what is the biggest could be, you know? Ah, what could be the biggest? The biggest must be our life. There's nothing else we can give, right? Jesus came into a foreign world. He was sharing his gospel. He was a missionary in this world, right? So he gave his life for us. But when I was a, when I became a, became a, became a Christian, I didn't like the idea of, you know, but now I understand that, why he has, he, had, he has done that. In 1991, like I said, the first uh, the Adventist church started in Mongolia, right? There was a young couple, the first, uh, first missionaries in Mongolia, came to, Mon uh, came to Mongolia in 1991, right after communism. So they have done a lot of work. They did a good job. And some people may ask, how did you know? In 1991, I was only three years old. So some people may ask, how did you know they've done a good job? Well, I'm the proof here, right? I became a Christian trying to fulfill Master's Commission. And when I became an Adventist, I didn't know about the story of you know, the first missionaries in Mongolia. And after several years, I heard the story. A young couple came to Mongolia to share gospel and only a few years later husband died because of uh, illness. So I was thinking, wait a minute, he came and died for me? died for us? To me it was very touching, you know. It felt more real than uh, any other things. Because when I was a kid, there was nobody for me, you know. I was a thief. Who would love to thief? And that story really touched me. And it helped me to choose the 
right way too. So Jesus sacrificed his life for the mission work. And also first missionary, his name was Brad. And his wife is sitting there. So Brad also sacrificed his life for mission work. To fulfilling God's commission. And let's read his last commission. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and yo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. How much will you sacrifice to fulfill God's commission? Thank you. For our closing hymn, kindly turn your church hymnal to hymn number 373. 373, Seeking the Lost. Shall we all rise?
let's pray in Mongolian. Агуйд зүн бурхам нь таймар айхалтай сайхан шабаад өдрий үхсэн байрлаа бид бүхэн таны эцэн тушаалыг бүхэл амдарлийхаа туршид бейлүүлхэд гүүцэлд үлхэд туслаарай. Энд ерсэн хүн бүр энзүүр сэдгэлтаа өөрийн байрт мүндээ нэ өөрийг сүүлгэж эдээр хүмүүс таны хэлсэний дагуу дэлхийн хэдзгаар хүртл таныг тунхаг лхад эцэг хүү ариун сүнсний нэр дээр тэдэн бафтизм үртэй хэд туслаарай. Бидний үүрэлж хайрлж, хамгаалж, бүхцүүлээр хангаж бэдэх байрлаа. Энэ бүгдийг эцэн Есүүсий нэр ээр залбирлаа. Амайн. Thank you. Just as you leave, just remember to Remember them on your way out for the love offering. Thank you.